Welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with for the week. And uh, this week is no different. Uh, last week I was out because I am sort of in the process of moving into the house that we got here in Greece. Um, and thankfully, when we've got all of our stuff moved in by this point, and uh, we got internet earlier this week, but we haven't had electricity up until now. But just like 15 minutes ago, I got a call saying they just turn on our, our electricity at the house. So maybe next Friday, we will have the first official uh, stream from the uh, System Crafters headquarters in Athens, Greece, which would be pretty awesome. Uh, very excited about that to have my own place finally and have a little bit more space to do the things that I want to do. Um, and also for my family to, you know, uh, not go crazy <laughs> uh, living with uh, relatives for nine, 10 months. That's a, it's a lot, long time to be staying in a very small place with, you know, two other people. So it's like five people all together. So yeah, but uh, we're, we're very excited and uh, I'm very excited to be back here today also um, and being able to hang out with all you guys. So I want to say hello to the people who are here so far. Hello to Drashal, Robert, Thing2, Gun. Uh, Gun says Yasu Cosme. Uh, that's a uh, hello world in Greek. Uh, Bill, uh, Daigo, Hector, uh, Thomas, Mark, uh, Jeff, uh, M Clear C, Alejandro, Tagnamag, Anton. Hello to everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Piotr is here also. Um, cool. So let's just jump into the updates. Uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, point out hello to Hyder and Cable Card Digital. Uh, point out that uh, Jeff Mo Bowman, who's here right now, wrote an article about the, the rename that we did from Rational Emacs to Crafted Emacs. So if you're interested in the latest updates about the project and sort of uh, the thought process behind the rename and everything, which I sort of described a bit on the stream two weeks ago, but uh, Jeff wrote some more stuff about it here. So definitely give a, a read to Jeff's blog post about that. And also want to uh, announce a really cool partnership uh, between uh, this channel and Mickey Peterson, the author of Mastering Emacs. I don't know if you've heard of Mastering Emacs, but it's a, it's a really, really good book about Emacs that Mickey wrote some number of years ago and has been keeping up to date with all the latest versions of Emacs that comes out. Uh, it goes in quite into, into depth about all the various things you might want to know about not so much customization of Emacs, but like actually using Emacs. So a lot of things about, you know, shells and uh, all kinds of customizations, keyboard macros, many, many things that I haven't had a chance to cover on this channel in depth. So if you want to get, you know, deeper into Emacs, then um, definitely check out his book. And if you also want to help out the channel at the same time, if you use this link to buy Mastering Emacs, uh, some portion of that uh, also goes to support the channel, which I thought was really nice of Mickey. Mickey actually had this idea that he wanted to help support the channel. And so we came up with this idea for me to be able to sort of, you know, point people towards Mastering Emacs and it sort of helps out the channel that way. So um, I actually bought a, a copy of this book some number of years ago. And, you know, I, I learned things there that I've been using uh, in my Emacs configuration and also on my channel uh, up until now. So I, I highly recommend it. If you check out the website, it's a very nice website. Uh, you can get a free sample of the book. Uh, I should also mention that um, Mickey's got a whole blog on this site that has quite a number of really useful posts about Emacs. Uh, probably you saw me retweet one of those uh, earlier this week. But um, if you want to get a sense of what kind of content is in this book, just check out, I think, masteringemacs.org and the article index, there's a ton of content here, uh, but yeah, I think he goes way more in depth in the book itself. So highly recommended, definitely give that a, a look if you uh, wanna have another good resource for learning more about Emacs and also help out the channel at the same time. Uh, thanks again to Mickey for, for setting that up because I think it's really nice of him. Uh, hello to Video Game Freak, Robert, 
uh, and Gaspard. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gun says printed or electronic. This is only a, an ebook, I think. I think that Mickey is, is self publishing and sells it directly on his website. Uh, Thomas says that book has been on my to do list for a while. Yeah, um, it's worth it. Definitely worth reading that book. Uh, Jeff says a super good book. Bought, the, bought a copy years ago. I think I just read that uh, message, but anyway, yeah, me too. So um, on to today's topic. Um, so today I'm going to try to scratch my own itch, um, and write some Emacs Lisp code to automate a particularly monotonous task that I avoid doing because it's so monotonous. And that is editing my YouTube video descriptions. Um, and you're probably asking yourself, well, why would you bother even writing code for that on this stream or on, you know, this channel in general? Um, well, if you run a YouTube channel, it's kind of nice to keep your video descriptions up to date um, because there's always new things you kind of want to add to descriptions because the description box is a great place to... Uh, speaking of which, that link that I showed you before about mastering Emacs is in the description box, just to sort of ma make a point. Uh, the, the description box is a place where you can give sort of information about the video itself, but also links to other related video playlists or maybe um, other channels that you're trying to promote for yourself, or maybe links to other places that, where people can support the channel. And uh, over time, you you post videos or do live streams, and all these descriptions that you're putting into these videos are sort of like a point in time. They don't ever get updated. And it's good to go back and update those sometimes to do things like uh, adding links to new playlists that you've been creating. Like for instance, if I do like the new Emacs from scratch playlist, I need to go back and add those to old videos so people can find them. Um, more easily or maybe updating links to websites. So for instance, if I have a link to a particular page on a website that maybe I've moved or it doesn't work anymore, I need to go and update those links in old descriptions or maybe just like temporary links to occasional events that I want to promote or like new things like this, this thing that I mentioned before. Um, so having some code to automate that task would be really helpful. And you could say, well, why don't you just use something like Python or JavaScript to automate that? Well, I think that doing it in Emacs actually gives me some extra benefits in terms of being able to do the editing of those descriptions um, and automating some text search and replace stuff inside of buffers and being able to uh, review it before I actually submit those changes back to the video. So I think that it's kind of interesting to do this with Emacs Lisp. Um, so here's sort of the flow that I have in mind for such a package for uh, of Emacs, Emacs Lisp code. Uh, first of all, I would want to download a description of a particular video to a file on disks in a temporary location. It's not meant to be like long term storage. It could be if we wanted it to be, but just to get it onto a, a file on disk or even in a buffer. But I'm, I'm thinking a file has some uh, useful benefits. I then open the file in a buffer and then, you know, manually make any desired edits. So I could just edit the description of the video just by myself and then save that file. And then I could use a command that I write to send those changes back to the original video on YouTube. So that's like the basic flow. I could just edit the description of the video inside of Emacs and then send the changes back all through Emacs Lisp. Uh, but then I would actually want to uh, make it possible to download all of my video descriptions for all of the videos, all the, the, the uh, pre-recorded videos or live streams and put it into a folder, probably with file names that have the actual short code of the video or whatever the ID of the video is as the file name, uh, so that I can go and edit many of them at the same time. Um, and even potentially create some kind of bulk editing action to go and do text replaces using like regular expressions to find certain sections and then replace text that's in, in there based on a template. Uh, and then after I'm done making those edits, I can mass upload all those descriptions back to the original YouTube videos. Now, obviously, that's a little bit risky. If I make some bugs in the code, I might, you know, wipe out all the descriptions for all of my old videos. But, you know, one thing I probably should do here is just like download all the descriptions to keep them in a folder that if I do something really bad, I can go and just, you know, post them back up there. So something interesting to do. Um, and I think that it's a uh, good application of using Emacs Lisp to do something that is not directly related to just, you know, being an Emacs package or uh, writing a major mode or a minor mode. This is something that has real utility outside of Emacs. So, but it also, you know, has a pretty good, um, you know, I think Emacs serves a good role here. If, if you were to do something similar where you had the ability to ed to edit a file for a particular description, video description, you would have to have a script that downloads all those. Then you manually go over to your editor and do the, the, the things. And then you go back to your shell and then run a, another script to upload all those descriptions back, which is fine. But we can do a little bit more of an uh, integrated, uh, automated approach inside of Emacs, I think. 
Uh, hello to Felipe. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Uh, and hello to Gavin and Ronnie. Alejandro, I don't, don't know if I said hello to you before. Maybe I did. Let's see. Uh, Ethernet says, I tried reading that book, but instead it was Emacs from scratch that made me fully switch to Emacs. I mean, Emacs from scratch is useful for at least getting you set up in a comfortable environment, but mastering Emacs will tell you more about what you need to know for like getting really advanced in your usage and your workflows with, uh, with Emacs. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gun says, have uh, Eliza take over the discussions. I'll just let MX Doctor take over the discussions. That'd be pretty funny, right? Uh, Gavin says, I didn't realize there would be a stream today. Yeah, um, I didn't either until today, basically. So here we are. Okay, so let's see. So uh, we probably won't get through all this whole workflow today um, because, you know, messing with third-party APIs is difficult. And also there's some um, quota restrictions for the YouTube data API or pretty much any Google APIs where if you use too much quota, then you can no longer make requests. So I don't think I'll hit the limits today because the things that I'm doing won't be too taxing on the API, but uh, it, could, it could happen. Uh, I don't know. I think I did a little bit of on this in a stream maybe like a year ago. Maybe a little bit longer than a year ago. Maybe it was about a year and a half ago where I was doing uh, YouTube chat integration into Emacs. I actually had written a lot of code in Emacs to talk to the YouTube live streaming APIs to pull the live chat into Emacs. And because I was doing that, because it requires you to pull so frequently to actually get you know real-time chat, uh, I was easily running up against the quota restrictions. So I had stopped messing with that for a while. Haha. <laughs> Malvedia says, hey, David, did you used to work on Atom? How do you feel about it shutting down? Uh, I don't know if I should have a, an opinion on that. Oh, shit. Sorry, I just spilled coffee everywhere. Obviously, that was a question that made me nervous. I think, I think my computer should be okay. So anyway, uh, Adam shutting down, it's unfortunate. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, many people had speculated for a while that Adam would, would go away. Um, people outside of Microsoft and GitHub, obviously, you know, that whenever you have such a popular editor like VS Code that is, you know, similar to Atom in a lot of ways and, you know, has a lot more activity behind it, um, it, it makes you wonder why a company would spend resources maintaining two very similar programs. So I have no insight into why it happened. All I know is that, you know, I think that many people thought it would be inevitable and it happened. So it is what it is. Um, uh, they, they left it open so that the community could take it forward if, if they want. I think some people may be trying to take it forward, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's difficult to maintain a very large editor with a complicated code base. And Adam's code base is quite complicated because of Electron and because of the fact that you have a lot of native libraries in C and C++ that you're using in Electron, and then you have a lot of JavaScript code as well. So I don't know. I mean, uh, kudos to anyone who's able to continue, you know, making Adam live going forward. But uh, I don't know. I think people's time would be better spent on editors that are supported, um, like Emacs, for instance. Okay. So uh, I got a couple of reference links here. Sorry, I'm just trying to like pour all this coffee off of me. It's just dripping off the table right now. It's great. Um, and uh, we'll start from reading some of these. We won't, won't spend too much time reading them. Uh, I think I missed saying here that um, since I had been writing a lot of code for accessing the YouTube APIs uh, in Emacs with my live crafter package that I use for uh, automating my streams and whatnot, uh, I'll be able to steal some code from that so that we don't have to like start from absolutely zero. But, you know, it would be nice to do more from zero than from, you know, uh, a solid basis because it's more fun to, to figure things out live. Yeah, it's not hot coffee, luckily. Yes, it's definitely a coffee stream uh, and it's, it's streaming down onto my leg right now. It's great. Okay, so um, I am going to call this uh, uh, package video meta just as something to call it. It's not really that fancy of a name. But I've got an empty file here to start from, and uh, we will start pulling in some stuff just to make some basic requests to the, the YouTube data API. And uh, also I have my uh, livecrafter.el code pulled up here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, one thing I had been using to help out a lot was this request package. This is a third-party package that uh, gives you a very 
Uh, easy to use API in Emacs for making requests to HTTP endpoints. So if you've ever, you know, done any um, coding work against REST APIs or any kind of, you know, web-based API, then the request library will be very useful for you in Emacs. In fact, uh, if I go look at uh, uh, Emacs request, request.el, I think that's it, right? Yeah. This is a pretty solid library. It's it's quite easy to use, very reminiscent of other HTTP client libraries you may have seen in other languages, so pretty good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Creeper says, can you run Lisp code with a shebang? You can actually run Emacs Lisp code with a shebang, for sure. Uh, the e Emacs supports that. Uh, Gun says, Greek coffee, just pour the glass of water over the spill to dilute it. No, it's not Greek coffee. This is, uh, this is, this is drip coffee that I put in the freezer to cool it off. Because I don't want to put ice cubes in there. I don't want to dilute it. It has to be, you know, raw, pure uh, coffee beans. Okay, so request library, that's sort of the main uh, requirement we have. I'm just going to go drop that over here. And then um, also I've got a couple variables for uh, setting up keys. I don't want to look at it because I might expose my key. I don't think I'll expose enough of it to be a problem. But, you know, after the stream is over, I'm going to delete the key anyway. So if anybody is sneaky enough to fi figure out what my API key is, I'm just going to delete it. So uh, hopefully it won't do any damage. I trust all of you. So um, let's see. Uh, video. Meta okay, okay. So let's see. Video meta client ID. I'm going to make these nil. I've got I've already got variables set for these because uh, I you know knew I would need to do this in advance. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, client ID is safe. Okay, cool. So that, that is basically it. So I want to def var those for sure so that we have them around. Um, now that's something you would not want to set as a variable, but that's something I'm doing just for my own convenience. Uh, it would be better to integrate with the auth sources API to pull this in, but you know. Hey Karthik, uh, Karthik says, I use the Emacs AIO library instead of requests for a REST heavy package recently, liked it a lot more, request callbacks quickly got out of hand for some co complex logic. Yeah, actually I, I ended up with uh, a problem with that um, as well. It, you, you can definitely get into callback hell. Let's check out uh, Emacs AIO because I have not looked at that in a while. Sync await for Emacs Lisp, ooh, fancy. Let's see. Okay, so it's like a special, uh, okay. So they're basically just doing the thing where they are using a macro to turn synchronous looking code into uh, async, I'm guessing. Typical pattern for programming languages. Yeah, I won't go that far just yet, but for a more robust implementation, you probably would need something like that. Let's split this here also and pull up Live Crafter below. Okay, so um, first of all, let me take a look. I have a function here, live crafter, well, uh, request, no, live crafter, um, sorry, live crafter, quest token, no, what is the, HTTP get, okay, that's what I wanted, probably need a put also. So I had a little function here that I want to reuse because this one's a little bit funky. So we will do a video meta here. So this is a function that uses the request library. Where is it actually? Am I using the request library or am I using something else? Get access token. URL retrieve. Is that not request? Uh, I think that's built in functions. Oh, it's from, from URL.el. Maybe I started using URL instead. Um, let's see. Gavin says, would be cool to see a comparison between all the HTTP clients. Yeah, that would be cool, actually. That's a good, good point. Okay, so... I don't know why I stopped using request. Let's see. I did, I'm not using it at all. Okay. Apparently, I got uh, a little bit uh, interested in using built-in functions for that. So maybe we'll stick with that because that's a bit more interesting. <laughs> so what, I, what this function is doing is it's uh, creating a local scope um, and it's building a parameter list to send, <coughs> excuse me, 
uh, for the request. I'm, I'm basically rewriting request here a little bit. I don't know why I decided to do that. Maybe it was for fun. I don't know. Probably learned something. And then I'm overriding this URL request extra headers before I call URL retrieve. So I'm, I'm retrieving something at a particular URL. There's a Lambda that's a callback, which will allow me to um, use research for to jump down to the actual body of the response. And then I uh, call the callback function that I pass in as a parameter here. Uh, and I, I take use JSON read to read the JSON response body. So if you haven't really done any uh, web service programming before, a lot of times uh, web services will speak in a uh, textual data format called JSON, which looks a lot like JavaScript objects. It was actually stands for JavaScript object notation. So um, it's, it's basically just a way to encode objects and arrays into text. And then this JSON read function, which is a part of Emacs now. Yeah, it's, it's part of Emacs. Uh, that can turn that into basically a lists, I think. So, or, or and an a list is, is an association list in Emacs. So basically, it's like a key value, or a set of key value pairs, which could be nested. So um, that is effectively the whole function for doing a get request. We would have to write one that's uh, similar for HTTP post. I don't. I think I must have had a problem with request. Maybe that's why I ended up doing it this way. But. Uh, the point is that um, we were able to set the authorization header for authenticating with a service. Uh, it looks like I also need a couple of these other helper functions as well, like uh, uh, the build URI function, build URI. I mean, you, you might wonder why I don't, don't just use the same uh, functions that I defined in LiveCrafter directly, uh, because I don't want to have any dependency on LiveCrafter yet. I might have to make my own YouTube API library at some point. Uh, Peter says, I use an advice to inject the auth header and get that out of the H HTTP logic. That could be a good idea, too. <laughs> All right, so um, build URI. This is basically just putting together query parameters for uh, a particular URI path, uh, which is useful for uh, lots, of, lots of requests. Also, build params. Where is that one being used? Build params. Yeah, right there. Let's, let's just do a little thing here. I'm, I'll copy some functions and I'll just go uh, bulk rename everything. All right, so get access token, get access token, all right. And that is another function, which is this uh, access token func. Don't ask me why this is a variable. I have no idea. Unless I meant to like replace that for testing purposes. Access token func. Or maybe I'm uh, redefining it. Or it could be because I meant to put another backend so that you don't use variables for this, like um, uh, auth, auth store. Uh, auth source? Yeah, auth source. Get access token, uh, access token func. Where am I setting that? Right here. Okay, extract token. Jeez, man, there's a lot of crap I wrote in here. Okay, some of these I'm going to copy and then I'm going to explain what they're doing because there's a lot of stuff going on here. I've actually got an authenticate function as well, which probably we're going to need to use. Okay, let's just drop this right down here. And uh, pull the other window back up. So we got request token, extract token, authenticate. Yeah, now subscriber count, cool. I forgot I had that function. That's kind of cool. All right. That's a good example of, of uh, the API working though, so maybe we'll just copy this over really quickly. And then I'm gonna go rename all the live crafter. So this is a shift alt uh, percent sign. Rename live dash crafter to uh, video dash meta and then exclamation point to just re replace all of them. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to be enough. So let me just eval the buffer. And then I can try to run um, video meta authenticate. Let me hide my screen first. I don't know exactly what it's going to do, if it's going to pull up a browser window or if I'll have control over that. So let me just do uh, webcam real quick. Let me double check that. Okay, you have to look at my uh, lovely appearance right now. Okay, so video meta authenticates. Okay, build auth URL. Let me get 
just a couple more things. Build auth URL. There's a couple things I forgot here. Let me put it back to screen. Okay. Um, that came before extract token. Let's do another uh, rename pass. Okay. And then um, eval buffer again. Now let's hide the screen one more time. I'm probably gonna end up doing this three times because I'm, you know, obviously not uh, prepared. Meta YouTube client ID. Okay, uh, video. There's a couple little things here to update. Eval buffer. Okay, now I think it's uh, doing, wow. How many browsers did I just pop open? Yeah, you can't see this right now, but that's 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 what I intended, so. Okay, let me pull this in another window. And then I'll log into my YouTube channel. Oh no. Here we go. Allow it. 500 error. Oh, you know what? I probably forgot to. Okay. I'll put it back to the screen again. Sorry for that. So, um, let's see. So I think I'm missing the HTTP server. Um, I think I talked about this in the video about uh, generating your website from org mode, uh, the simple HTTP package, which is also not built in, is very cool. Um, it gives you the ability to run an HTTP server in Emacs, uh, and which we need for authentication. We need to be able to uh, listen for a callback message from the YouTube authentic sorry, the Google uh, authentication flow. So let me see if I can, yeah, here we go. Whoop. HTTPD. So that's in authenticate. I'm kind of surprised this uh, actually. Huh, did I already load it? Is that what happened? HTTPD. So it even hit browse URL. I wonder if anything happened in messages. No. Okay. Funny. So the auth callback did not seem to go through, which is interesting. Gun says, I use it for previews uh, with impatient mode when doing markdown. Yeah, impatient mode is really nice for that because it will just cause the page to, uh, to refresh. Whenever I'm trying to do like uh, prototyping the design for a website, I think I use imp impatient mode so that it automatically reloads my uh, CSS uh, every time I make tweaks to it, which is pretty nice. All right, so I need to check this and see if uh, so. HTTP, HTTP, sorry, HTTPD port three thousand HTTPD start. Did I not set the? There's like a callback function for that, and then stop. Oh, I didn't. Oh, here it is. Okay, that's the one. I forgot this little servlet thing. So this is the API if you want to uh, register a particular route. Hey, Mjolnir. Mjolnir. I'm good. How are you? Uh, if you want to register a particular route under your um, website or API hosted from within Emacs, this def servlet macro uh, will set up a route under OAuth2 underscore callback. This is the, the, the name of the route effectively. Uh, the response type, I believe. And then um, if there's an error, which I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from, but at least this is what's needed. This this actually needs to be registered for the purpose of uh, uh, getting the right kind of um, authentication flow to work. All right. So any more def servlet in here? I think that's the only one. Okay, so that should be enough for the authentication. 
part of the game. Let me uh, eval buffer. Let's try that one more time. I'm gonna go hide my screen and then uh, I will run my uh, meta, video meta authenticate function one more time. And now it's gonna open up a bunch of browsers and then I'll close them. Select my YouTube account. Go through the unsafe application thing. Allow it. Oh, come on. Void function test get. Oh, okay. So I've got a function that I need to test get client secret. Where is that function? What is that? Client secret test get client. I must have like been in the middle of writing some code in this. Get mirrors in my pupils. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that's not happening. It's gonna be really fun if uh, if I don't get this working, isn't it? Okay. So let me uh, pull up the screen again, so you don't have to keep looking at me. So uh, what I what I see is that uh, ooh don't want that. Um, there's a little error that says that. Um, you know, I could copy that key, actually, I think. Client secret test kit. I, I had a function here. So you can see in this live crafter code in this request token function. I have some function here that's apparently getting hit, but it doesn't exist. I don't know what I did with that. It shouldn't even be there. Request token. So request token uh, It's another request. Client secret, test, get client secret. Ah, is that the uh, the API key? Client underscore secret. Could be, unless it's what comes from the, oh, maybe it comes from the response. <laughs> okay. Authentication code is something you shouldn't be writing on screen on stream because it always goes wrong and then you have the uh, luxury of uh, exposing your keys your actual keys to the people who are watching So I'm trying to think of what I what I was trying to do here. Uh, I think I had a function to extract the oh extract token. Is that what it is? Video meta extract token extract token Let's see what am I missing? And what is client secret even being used for? Nothing. So that just doesn't even need to be there. I think that's the problem that I'm having right now. So if I eval this buffer, go back and hide my screen again one more time, just to verify everything's good. I'm gonna run a video meta authenticate. I'm gonna pop open a browser and I'm gonna go into another browser. Come on, work this time. Oh, come on. What? I'm not even... Okay, I think I did something stupid. Because it should not be... Okay. Let's uh, do a little... Uh-huh, that's why. Very smart. Okay, eval buffer. I'm going to do this one more time. I think it's going to work this time. Famous last words. Just like every developer ever says. All right, moment of truth. Oh, come on. Auth redirect URI, okay. I'm missing some variables. I have that. No, I don't have that. Okay, let's just paste that stuff in, do a rename. Almost done, almost done, sorry, sorry. Eval buffer. All right. Okay. Last authenticate. For 
For those of you wondering why I'm not showing my screen right now, it's on purpose. Almost there. Come on. Work this time. I think it might have worked. Let's see. So, uh, what is it? I think it worked, but I can't tell exactly what happened. Okay, let me put the screen back on and then uh, we'll talk about it. Brian says relax, please. Okay. You know, uh, you say relax, but you know, with my, my screen hidden, I lost uh, nine viewers, so. I'm very aware of uh, how these things go. All right, so let's see. Let's try to actually run one of these functions and see if it does anything. So this, uh, let's try a video meta get subscriber count. It's probably gonna fail. Oh, okay. Haha, <laughs> bad invalid authentication credentials. Oh, to access token, login cookie or other valid credential. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at what I'm doing wrong here. So we got the params. Uh, this is part of HTTP get. And uh, get access token. Access token func. Okay, so video meta extract token token details. Interesting. I don't know if that's actually going to do anything. But I think I stored token details somewhere. Hi, Sergey. Sergey says, for a long time, I was watching and enjoying uh, System Crafters videos and recorded streams. Happy to be here live. Well, glad to see you. Okay, so let me... I need to try something really quickly. Uh, let me... I'm sorry, I'm going to have to hide the screen one more time. My bad for that. I just need to be able to take a look at uh, what is coming out of a particular function. Uh, Gun says, doesn't that work with some sort of net RC file? Yeah, the the auth <coughs> excuse me auth sources would be the right way to do this ultimately, but uh, I don't have that set up at the moment. Okay. Request token. I wonder if it ever got to that point. Okay, let's see Val the buffer. Jeff says, maybe put the browsers on the other monitor. That would be great if I had another monitor. I would love that, but I don't have one right now. I'm, I've got one screen. That's all. Gun says, mark all pack, uh, pictures showing traffic signals. Yeah, we're not having to deal with that at the moment, at least. But uh, it's still not pleasant. Authenticating again, just to see what's going on. Okay, uh, let's see what, it, oh, okay. So it says requesting token. Something's wrong here. I think it never makes it to the point where it, it uh, gets the token. Let's see, with temp buffer, retrieve. Is this a callback? Okay, so uh, message in callback. Yeah, we're doing a uh, message debugging right now, which is uh, a lot of fun. Okay, so we're gonna run uh, authenticate one more time. Yeah, sorry folks. We'll get back in there in a second.
Okay, so it got to the callback. Okay, so I'm running it again. Pulling out the wrong browser for the 15th time. Let me just try it from this one because, uh, oh, geez, I don't have to log in. Client secret is missing. Okay, so there's something wrong there for sure. Client secret. So maybe uh, maybe that piece that I took out was actually necessary, but I don't know why. Uh, let me look that up actually. So Google Developer Console. Sorry, folks. I know. Let me check the chat uh, while I'm doing all this. Let's see. Uh, Master Gamer says, just got into the stream. What are you coding today? I'm writing some automation for accessing the YouTube data API so I can try to uh, automate uh, updating my video descriptions. I know it sounds like a ridiculous thing to do for an Emacs uh, integration, but uh, it's actually kind of cool to be able to do that. Oh, here's a client secret. So why, did I, why was I not storing that? Or live crafter client secret get client secret okay I must have been doing something different so let me um, let's see def var video meta client secret that is definitely the problem here OAuth 2 authentication patterns are a little bit um, annoying to implement but hey you know we do what we can. Video meta client secret. Paste that in. Okay. And if I check it, scintillating. That's how I can uh, describe this stream right now. Okay, so client secret. This should do the trick. I know I said that before. All right, cool. Let's have valid buffer. Let's run authentication again. Got the auth pop up. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna log in and pray to all the computer deities that it works this time. Wrong type argument. Well, the, <laughs> the access token showed up. Error in process filter, string P. Fantastic. Oh, you know what? That must be what it is, because I just did a flat out message. All right, one more, whoop, 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 whoop. no, we're not doing that right now. Eval buffer. Okay, here we go. This will all be worth it. That's the wrong channel, yo. Piotr had to leave. It says, uh, unfortunately, I have to go, but this is such a cool topic, and I wouldn't mind a whole uh, series about coding tools and uh, applications with Emacs. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, right? All right, so let me run this uh, video uh, meta... Okay, I think we're good. Let me put the screen back on. Now we can finally do that. So uh, CSS. All right, so we're back now. The screen is back, thank God. I finally authenticated to the YouTube data API. Let's see. Gun says, utilizing YouTube API seems harder than hacking the NSA. Well, it's uh, just OAuth 2 that we're dealing with. But now that OAuth 2 is, is dealt with, now we can finally start making um, requests. 
And Peter says, you need a client ID, client secret when using a service account to exchange them for an access and refresh token. Yes, that's right. I forgot. <clears throat> and then I realized it after uh, I saw a nice little error message in the response. So I was able to run this uh, video meta get subscriber count, which is kind of a cheesy function that just you know writes out the response in the end. But I'm going to run that again. So you can see here in the echo area that I did actually make a successful uh, request to the API. And um, I get the list of channels with the where is this subscriber count? Is it in here? OK, I must not have finished writing this function, obviously. But anyway, we did get some kind of um, response back. So first of all, let's think about how we want to, uh, Jesus, <laughs> uh, which video we would like to update the description on. So um, youtube.com uh, system crafters. I'm just going to pull the latest video or maybe should I pull one that, you know, it's a bit older and maybe if it gets destroyed, it won't matter so much. Let's go a little bit back, back in time. How about uh, the one where, well, some of these have kind of lame descriptions, the really old ones. What does this say? We're not going to listen to a System Crafters video inside of a stream. That would be a little bit too uh, ridiculous. Okay, stop. Thank you. Yeah, that that's way too basic. Maybe it should be a more recent one where I actually have a uh, st structure for everything. How about this one, the uh, Automate Org Mode Websites video? Okay. Don't play. Stop. All right, this is definitely more indicative of my current uh, pattern for, for description. So I basically want to just download this whole description for this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, save it locally. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to just put this in a comment here so that we have it available. So uh, defund video meta uh, get video description and then uh, video ID, I would say. And then I can just have a little uh, call for that video meta get. Oh, come on now. Get I haven't I haven't evaluated yet. Yeah, uh, description. And then I'm going to take this string here, drop it in right there. Cool. So. We can do a similar thing where uh, we just copy this whole let block. And I said I was going to explain some of the other stuff that I was doing in the code, but I think it, that I wasted too much time on auth. So we'll just, you know, move forward a little bit. Alejandro is mentioning F sharp. Not sure why. <laughs> oh, the, the F sharp videos. Yeah, I, I could do that, but they don't have a structure either. I, I don't think. OK, so we got the, the get here. Wait, what did I just do? Yeah, I want that. All right, so uh, let's look at the details that I have pulled up about the uh, YouTube video APIs. Let me just pull this up right here. All right, so the YouTube API has this kind of idea of uh, parts for the s sections of the uh, response you get back. Oops. What I need is the description, which uh, I don't want from the localized thing. I want it from snippet. So I think snippet is the thing that I'm looking for. Uh, snippet object contains basic details about the video, such as its title, description, and category. So if I go back into the function, um, I think this the part is snippet. Um, channels is not the thing I want. It's the videos, I think, right? Uh, the videos, resources. Let's try videos here. VODs, videos. Uh, Thomas says you might want to re-enable chat overlay. It's on. Yeah. It's just, you know, there, there's not much activity at the moment. Okay, so list, uh, the list method. Um, I don't want list, I just want the normal get. So get rating, um, let's see.
behind etag ID snippet. Okay, so I don't think I need anything else. ID might be helpful, but I don't know if I need that. So mine, there's usually parameters, but I don't think I need that. Why is this not scrolling anymore? This page has stopped uh, responding to mouse movements. Okay, let's go down. There's no parameters to this, I think. It's a lot of stuff that I don't need. Okay, let's go back to the overview. Probably is enough if I just uh, do that that simple request. I'll take the mine part out. I need to leave the key in, I think. So if I uh, execute this, no filter selected, expecting one of my, oh, my rating ID chart. Okay, so um, I think ID I need to put here. This is a parameter to the request. Uh, then I'm gonna put in here video dash ID. And we're gonna execute this one more time. Yeah, there it is. Description. Let me go to, excellent. All right, so that's the whole description for the video, which is nice, what we wanted to see. Let me just see if I can find uh, where to reach for that. All right, so we got this whole object that comes back. Um, thumbnails, default. It would really be nice to see this kind of uh, expanded a little bit, I think, right? Make sure I'm not doing anything. Got response. So there's, there's the kind. Kind of looking at the e, e list. Sorry, the A list here. E tag items. All right. So there's an items array. So first of all, um, what was I doing before? Is it A list get? Uh, token. Extract token. Oh, a suck. A sock associate I think that's what that is okay so access token out of JSON body so if I go in here and then um, message well I can just use the message I already have let's do this on the response um, what are we looking for we're looking for Kind tag items. So let me pull out items first. Now, is there a uh, a variant of a sock that get, lets you give a key list? I think I must have had to write my own at some point for this. Maybe there's something in uh, Subber X. Item list. Find the first item whose car matches what? Let's see, um, a assault collection, return of the associating values. Let's look at the docs for this function. Oh, obsolete, use CL assault instead. Well, let's take a look. Find the first item whose car matches item in list. Is that for, that's not for setting, that's for getting, right? Okay, there's, yeah, there's too much stuff in there. Let's just, let's start with the basics and then we'll just uh, hack our way through it. All right, so uh, we're gonna run it one more time and then uh, see what we get. So I pulled something out, which seems to have worked. Let's go Control H E and then I'm trying to see where that's coming from. Cause I'm getting it twice. So I think, okay, items, cool. So if I get the value off of items, I pull the cutter off that, then I have an array or a vector, I suppose. Um, uh, Gun says CL dash, are those common list functions? Yeah, they're like, you know, common list compatibility functions inside of Emacs, uh, but I'm not enough of a common list expert to, uh, to use them correctly at the moment anyway. So uh, let's get the cutter of this list. And then um, we need the first, Let's see, uh, array, inf, array, ref, no. So what is the function for getting um, a particular item of an array? Let's see, 
know this is, I should do this in info, but whatever. So Emacs uh, index array. Emacs lisp arrays, functions that operate on arrays, okay. A ref, okay, I knew it was something, some kind of ref. So A ref, and uh, the first parameter is the array, and the second is the index. So that should give me this, uh, this video here. And then once I have that, I should be able to um, use a sock again to pull out snippet. So let me write some functions because this is gonna start getting really nasty if I start doing this uh, this way. So define video meta extract uh, video list from the response. So let's do this. Uh, first of all, we're gonna pull this part, okay? And then next is defund video meta extract. Um, hmm, let's see. Well, that gives us an array, right? Because then we're calling a ref on it. So that's probably good enough. If I do this, uh, video meta extract video list on the response. And then we have the first item. And the next thing I want to do is uh, defund video uh, meta extract video description on a video. So that would be a sock of a snippet on video. And then from there, I need to do an a sock on a description. So if I eval those two and then wrap this in video meta extract video description, then in theory, that should be enough to get me the description out of the video without it being too ugly. All right, so let me drop that back in again. Eval, make sure I eval these functions. And then I'm gonna run this again. Okay, I might have gotten it right. Oh, I need to do a cutter on that probably. Where are we? Yeah, I see something here. Let me, right, okay, cutter on that so that I don't have the whole pair. Um, Cutter. Now let's uh, run it one more time. And I think I might have it. Yeah, just string. So now we're actually able to pull the description of the video. Gun says we need something like JQ for ELISP. Gavin says one day. Yeah, one day I'll spend some time with Common Lisp. I'm too much of a scheme fan, usually. Okay, so now that we've got the video description, we can um, download the description to a file. So what about writing a function for that? Defund video meta uh, download video description, video ID. So we wanna download the description and then we want to uh, put it into a file into a particular folder path. Come on now, there we go. Okay, so um, let description. Yeah, this is horrible. I need to increase my lispy foo. Okay. So now uh, I just need to write it to a file, but first of all, I need a folder. Let's see def var video meta um video file path uh video meta maybe i could just do that if i were to go to slash temp okay cool so i'll eval that one and then um I think uh, there's a make directory. Ensure the directory exists. Uh, video file path and then T for uh, parents. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, save the 
file to the path using the video ID as file name. So then I can say, uh, was it with temporary? Let's see, with temporary, wow. With temp file, create a new buffer, evaluate body there and write the buffer to blah. <laughs> okay, so I think that's enough. So I'm going to use with temp file, uh, expand file name, uh, video meta video file path. And then uh, let's see, probably want to save it as, as a text file, let's say format. Is that right? Format? Yeah. Dot txt percent s. Uh, video ID. Okay, so with temp file, then insert, uh, what is it, description, to do add some metadata header, probably need some metadata there. And then uh, save buffer, is that the right function? <laughs> save buffer, okay. That should in theory be enough. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm gonna um, pull down this function, just to call it. Paste that in, grab this uh, thing, which should not be pasted in, video ID. Give that as a parameter, then execute. All right, so wrong type argument, say what? Are there just digits and letters in the IDs? Um, there's like uh, hyphens and underscores and stuff like that too, but that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't know if any of that's gonna uh, mess with the saving the file to disk. Okay, save current buffer, insert buffer. Oh, that's not right. Video meta get description. Oh, okay. so. We have to deal with a callback here because this is just returning the HTTP request object. So callback, we're gonna have to do it this way, which is the thing that uh, Karthik was talking about where you get into uh, the hell of uh, callbacks. So callback, and we're just gonna pass in this little form. And then the message we'll get rid of now. Uh, we also need to do, to do a fun call, I think, on that fun call. If that works, let's see, fun call. Function. This is not actually right. Let's see. I've used fun call another time here. Okay, so directly uh, callback. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Great. So that should be enough. What the hell did it just do? Okay. Let me get rid of this little part. So that will uh, call the callback, but we also need a mm, callback to pass in. So in this case, what it means is we need to run that function first, video meta get video description. So let me, this probably needs to be a private function too. And then video ID, and then we we can pass it a uh, lambda with description. So then instead of this whole thing that we're doing, that we can um, go inside the callback and do the same thing. Boom. Lambda description. Okay, so now this should take care of that. So let me uh, reeval this function, reeval this function, and then run the actual function. File to save in, don't you already know? Interesting. Tom, <clears throat> excuse me, Thomas says, uh, isn't the ID used as the last part of the URL, hence the ur must be URL friendly and thus likely file system friendly too, yes. But Gun is right. Um, it might be true that there will be slashes in the in the ID. So 
that's something to look out for. <clears throat> we will have to uh, to guard for that at some point, but probably not right now. All right, so with temp file, write the buffer to file. So I probably don't even need to use save buffer, do I? Evaluate body there and then write the buffer to file. So let me just take out uh, save buffer there. It, just inserting should be enough. Footer should be... Per I'm sorry? Sure, yeah, provide video meta, but I don't know why it all of a sudden decided they want to do that. Opening output file is a directory. So expand file name must not be working here. I think I did it backwards. Yeah. Let's do this. Bad, bad developer. Okay, that should be right. I think that's correct. So if we were to go to slash temp slash video meta slash, yeah, there we go. So now the description is in that file. Um, that's great. So now we have a basis for uh, editing that file. We can edit it however we want and then uh, push that back. These emojis are not showing up well. Um, I'm not sure how to deal with that. If I were to submit this back, it would probably would um, break the way that the emojis are displayed. So I think maybe it's an, an encoding issue. Maybe I need to change something with how I'm making the request. Because <laughs> Emacs can handle strings with, uh, with emojis in them. So it must just be an encoding issue. Let me see um, HTTP get. All right, so let's check URL retrieve, encoding. Okay, no, that's for URL encoding, multibyte string, as UTF-8. Yeah, that doesn't matter, I want the response. Maybe it's a header thing. So um, HTTP request uh, response encoding. HTTP response encoding. Content encoding. I think the, in content type maybe. What, where am I setting content type, Jason? I think I did it somewhere. I'm pretty sure I saw the application slash. Really? Ah, okay. Gun just checked. Um, so YouTube does that, right? That would be great if they did. Gun says they, they replaced the uh, slash and plus sign from base 64 with underscores. That would explain why I've seen underscores in YouTube IDs, uh, video IDs a few times. <laughs> so I must have UTF. Okay, HTTP request uh, UTF, UTF eight. Care set parameter. That can't be right. Oh, that is right. Content type. that's for the response isn't it so uh what is the accepts whoops accept it should be accept header okay all right so accept yeah Hungry Spirits, thank you, uh, is mentioning the accept header. And I basically just need to do this, right? So um, let me put this in here. Add it uh, as another header in the list. Not there. And then uh, put a string in. And we want application JSON. All right, so if I save that, 
Let's try to run it again. Let's go back to that buffer. Ah. Didn't help. Kind of interesting. I wonder... Um, Captain No Beard, hello, nice to see you. If I may humbly suggest this would be much easier using please.el instead of URL retrieve with issues issues like this uh, drove me crazy to write it. Let's see what uh, please.el does. I mean, I might just use it if it's gonna make things easier because writing my own stuff is kind of uh, idiotic. Okay, so UTF. Usage. Not sure if all servers accept the care set param. It seems pretty common, um, but thank you. I lag continuously. All right, so accept. Okay, as Jason read, that's cool. You can just filter it as the response comes back in. Uh, is this synchronous? Must be synchronous. There's also an asynchronous. Okay, with the then. Cool. All right, I like the API. That's nice. Let me see if uh, <laughs> for something like this, synchronous does make sense, actually. So if I have the URL, let me go check this part. I could try it real quick. So straight use package. Uh, PLZ. Let's just give it a look and see uh, if it's going to make things easier here. So I want to make a request to let's just try this real quick. Okay, that's nice. So let's change it up, and we're going to make a request directly to this uh, URL. But the thing is, I need to um, come up with the query params, too. I think it's probably please. Because you're, you're effectively asking the API to get something for you. So please get this URL as Jason Reed. You know, it's a very readable, literate style. Okay, so I need to put my uh, authentication garbage in there. Headers, I can just drop the headers in. Let's just, you know, little by little, we'll get this thing rolling through. Uh, content type application JSON, I'm gonna leave it that way. Please, please, please. Uh, Alex says, uh, just uh, arrived and watching from the beginning. No idea if this was discussed already. Uh, uh, Adam has a spiritual successor being written in Rust called Zed. That's right. Um, I forgot to mention Zed. Zed is uh, basically written by the same people who created Adam. Some, uh, some folks I know. And uh, it looks pretty interesting. But I'm too engaged in uh, Emacs to try any other editors at the moment. Okay, so... Let's just see what this returns, because obviously it's not going to... Oh, HTTP error? Okay, that's cool. Zed's not dead. Um, How do I get the error out? Is there like a an error thing? Or do you uh, catch an exception of some sort? Hungry Spirit says, Do we need to configure Emacs to display native emojis, or it works out of the box? Uh, in Emacs 28... It, uh, it works a lot better out of the box. It did not do that in the past. All right. So what did that say in the messages? HTTP error. Okay. Maybe if uh, Cap and No Beard is here, they can tell me. Hey, Garjola. Should be Oslaitza. Uh, I don't know what that is. And I'm definitely not pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> So headers uh, also need query params. Let's see. Uh, qu what do they just do? 
Go away. This one thing that um, Erbstluft is doing that's a little annoying. Pop-ups are huge. Yes, German is not going to uh, mesh well with me because I'm too uh, worried about pronouncing, pr pronouncing things correctly and I just don't have it in my head. So, interesting. Query. How do I pass query parameters? Examples. Headers. Maybe it's something like headers. Args. Body, JSON, and code. Okay. Post light cell. Post light cell. Query. Args. Okay. I can't find how to do something that. I need to do headers, body, else, finally, no query. Oh, okay. Yeah. The query parameters just go in the URL, of course. So I have a thing for that. So uh, build uh, URI, build params. Cool. I should use this. This is probably the, the way to go. I just need to use my function for this. Oops. Uh, let's go back down here and then... Call video meta build URI. Ah, oh, come on. And then um, parameters. So if I were to take this params here and drop it in and throw the little back tick at the front. No, what is happening? Lispy is doing some freaky stuff these days. Dude, that is wrong. What is What is going on? I must have done something to uh, Emacs while experimenting with this code. Okay, let's see if this actually works. Key, no. Key does not go in the... Where am I ripping key out? I must be doing something special with key. Because that would go in the uh, in the header. API key. That's not what I need either. Let's take that out. I don't believe that goes there. Wait, that was wrong. It's this one. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. I think it's going to uh, barf. Uh, also, hmm, should I just drop that in there? I know this is not really a good use of my time at the moment, but I'm trying to see if the response comes back with the right stuff in it using uh, Alpha Pop as library. It should be error. Okay, it's probably because I don't have this, the uh, auth header in there. Where is my stuff for that? Authentication or authorization. I'm just going to rip that off real quick and then jump back down into the please block. right here let's change this to a back tick let's drop in here and paste that all right let's see if this actually does anything okay it's doing some stuff that's a response and um as part of that i want to call this function extract video description let's just do it this whole way here No. Response. Yikes. This is going to be a gnarly form. And then if I go try to format it, 
it's going to delete all my code. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to leave that as it is right there. And then the let, I just want to drop the a ref inside. Okay. All right, so we got the text. Question is, is the... Ah, the emojis show up right. Good job. Okay. Nice work, Alpha Papa. You've, you've, you've cracked the code. Maybe I'll just stick with please because it actually gets the job done in this case. And it's uh, it allows me to do things synchronously so I don't have to deal with the callbacks. So that's nice. All right. So then if I were to change up my existing code, what time is it? Okay, we got a little bit of time here. By the end of this video or stream, probably the, the goal should be that we can update a description, which I think we're almost there. So let me... Uh, switch some things around. I can use please for the HTTP get function, but now it no longer needs a callback, which is nice. So I can abstract away putting in the authorization header. I don't need, seem to need, need the care set stuff anymore, which is good. Let me just grab this, go up here to YouTube client at Emacs. Yeah, that's basically what we're doing. To HTTP get. Video meta request URL. Okay, we're building that, which is good. We need that. URL request extra headers. I don't need to override that anymore. <clears throat> I also don't think I need this temp buffer stuff. So let me drop that in right there. Or you know what? Let, let's let's do this. I just want to keep that old function around just in case. Let's uh, you do a little copy pasta uh, to keep that one. I'll drop it down here and then uh, throw a comment around it. Okay. So now the new HTTP get function will then have this inside. Can I say indent S expression? Okay, good. That, that doesn't delete all the code. So let's just use the, the built-in function for that. All right, so we want the request URL. We don't need that. We can actually do this directly. So if we were to put this here, delete that part. And then once again, indent S expression, we don't need a let. So we're basically just ripping out everything except for just calling please directly. We're also gonna delete this with temp buffer. Um, okay. That indent is not right. What the hell? Okay, there we go. Please get video meta request, blah, 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 blah. Uh, callback no longer needed. Which actually is going to change the usage pattern of this entire thing. Get subscriber count. Honestly... I don't need to let anymore. So I can probably just drop it directly into this function. But I'm not that worried about this one. I'm more worried about the other ones that are uh, doing the authentication flow. Like, no. There's no others? Okay, I must be doing it some other way. That's fine. Let's just stick with this. All right, so now... Um, get video description. can now be this without the callback. No callback. I put that right there, just like what I was doing before, basically. And then take the callback out. Grab that. Maybe make this a let star. Probably not the best idea in the world. Description. Paste that in. And then, um, well, it's not really a description, is it? It's the response. Holy shit, what did I just do? In fact,
I can just take this directly and put it right here. I don't even need, need the let star. Probably better that way. All right, so we're going to do another indent S expression. Pull that up a little bit. No more params. Nope. Keep messing that up. Uh, then I think that's it, right? Containing expression ends prematurely. <laughs> Hello to Pavel. All right. Um, the let here is not encompassing everything, I believe. No, it is. Okay. Response. I don't need callback anymore. All right. So now I have that. So if I were to just call this directly, what do I call it? Uh, get video description. Let's try that. Wrong number of arguments to what? HTTP, whoops, HTTP get URL params. Maybe that was it. I didn't actually reavow that. Request, request URL. Ah, it's just URL, right? Okay, do that again. And then here, that's not right. Come on. Oh, uh, this is wrong. That's right. Okay, one more time. Wrong arg uh, type argument. Okay, the response came back. I saw something happen there. So I think we need to uh, simplify something here. And then I'll comment that little block out. I just want to rip off the, the video list if I can get it back. Okay, that gave me information. Let's see what the format is. Ah. Let's go right up here. So I should be able to do a ref zero on that. I don't know why it gave me problems before. A ref uh, zero, run it again. Okay, that's the information. Kind e tag snippet. All right. Then extract video description should work. I don't know why this was uh, complaining before. Just like this. Array P nil. What? I don't know what I did wrong, but now it's right. Okay, so now we have a synchronous function. <laughs> that uh, does the right thing, code's a lot cleaner, which is nice. Uh, let's jump down to the next function, uh, which is the one where we get the video description and try to write it to a file. So what we can just do is, is like flip this function body around. So I'm gonna delete this code and put it on the outside. And then uh, take this comment line up there as well. There's probably some kind of nifty thing in Lispy that will do that for me, but you know. And then I can grab this part. Let's get rid of the uh, the lambda. And then for description, we'll just paste this in. Obviously, I need to do some error handling here and make sure that I'm actually getting the stuff I'm expecting. But, eh, you know, this is just hacking code. Okay, so it saved the buffer. Let's check the buffer. And the emojis are showing up correctly. Boom. All right, so after all that rewriting, we actually got to the point now where we have um, a buffer with the 
correct contents of the description, uh, even with emojis displaying. So that does help. And the uh, code in video meta is a bit clearer because we're not using URL, well, whatever the function is called, URL what? Retrieve, URL retrieve, okay. So uh, yeah, this, uh, this please library is pretty nice actually. All right. Probably don't need content type application JSON there, but we'll just leave it for now. So I can delete this function. Um, and now that we have the description, um, let's let's try uploading it again. So it would be good to decompose this stuff a little bit. And by that, I mean, um, we can have a video meta upload video description uh, with the video ID and then the description itself. So what we would like to do is uh, take just the, a string that we have in hand, which basically would come from a file and then uh, upload it back to the video in question. So let's check out, I probably need to, uh, to use a different verb for that too. So let's take a look at what we need for that. Um, update. Updates of videos metadata. So for update, is this a put or a post? What is it? Put requests, okay. So, we can use please for that purpose. Uh, HTTP get, we can make our own HTTP uh, put as well. And this will need to be a put. Now the as thing, I guess the as makes sense if you wanna have a, a response back. We still need the authorization. Uh, let's see, part string, part parameter service to purpose and operation. Okay, that's the, uh... all right, so snippets, snippet is what we need. All right, so we're going to put snippet in there. Let's go and drop this code in. Did I just copy that function? Is that what happened? Okay, cool. Put that there. Uh, upload video description, upload description. All right. Now we're going to put a put here. Videos, part, snippet, ID, video ID. Okay. And request body. Uh, provide a video resource in the request body. For that resource, you must specify a value for these properties. Uh oh, you have to? Only required if the request updates the video resources snippet. So you have to put title. Yikes. I have not been saving that. So um, I think we could do that. What we need. So here, here's what I'm thinking. In this file, we probably need some kind of... Uh, data object right above the description and that could be an a list so we could have something like title and then the video's title um maybe even the id even though it's, it's encoded in the file name but you never know if you might want to have it there uh what else would we want to have there probably just that we could just use those two piece of information to uh to help along with this So let's see if we can grab that information. Is uh, titles and snippets. So if I can rip that out. Hey Glenn, I see it. So maybe for Captain No Beard says you might want to try to use a list uh, struct it tends to help with this kind of stuff. So just take the object and drop it into a struct. Yeah, a list is sort of you know what I'm comfortable with, even though it's kind of a pain in the ass. All right, so we have get video description. Um, maybe I should make that get video details and return a simpler thing. So how about this? Uh, 
details. Pros and cons. Yeah. So video meta extract, extract video list. We're getting the first one out of the list. And then we need to uh, extract the video details. So what if I do... Ooh, this is looking really nasty. Put that there. Oh, wait. I don't want this just hanging around. Extract video description. All right, so we will do this. Extract video details. And then um, we are going to return an A-list. So ID. And I think that's just straight up ID on top of the video. Hey, Minas Mazar. Uh, Mina says, it's, is it possible to set local buffer specific variables when creating the buffer instead of hard coding the buffer content itself? Yes, but um, I don't intend to keep the buffers open, but you're right, I could do that. Uh, Captain No Beer says, one suggestion I would make is write a function like uh, video meta API that would wrap calls to please and include the necessary headers to uh, automatically. Yeah, I probably should do that. It would be better to wrap that function for sure. All right, so ID uh, cutter of uh, a sock of ID from video. I'm pretty sure that should work. And then uh, same thing for the rest. I'm going to put in, oh, I need to do this right there. Description. Pull that up right there. Yep. And then same thing for title. In fact, let's do a let here. Uh, snippet. We'll pull this part out so we don't have to keep doing it. All right. Need some popcorn. Okay. All right, so ID, uh, we'll pull that out of snippet. And then uh, another snippet reference here. This one needs to be changed to title. We need to uh, clean up this title right here. And then, um, yeah, that's it. It returns that A-list directly. So let's give that a shot. Get video details, extract video details. Extract video details. Get video description. So now what I can do here, what did I just do? This okay. Ah. I can't depend on Lispy right now to help me with formatting, unfortunately. So with temp file, let's do this outside. Maybe write a yeah snippet snippet for snippets. Maybe. File path, get video description, video ID. Uh, is that? Yeah, it's doing the request. All right, so we have the ability to do that now. So how about this? Uh, let video, video meta get video details. That's a mouthful. Video ID. And then that's all good. Okay, this is exactly what we want. So now at this point, I can just say uh, a sock. Yeah, I need a way to, to pull that uh, value out too. So description video. There must be a function for that. Just to rip it off without the, the cutter, the necessity of cutter there. But I also want to um, insert that S expression. So how about I do this insert? Let's just give this a shot. So um, format, capital S, video. And then uh, do a little insert of another little three hyphens. There we go. Now we're adding our metadata header. Let's see what this does now. All right, so get video details. I have not um, eval those functions yet, apparently. Care or string P, could or a sock uh, description snippet. Let me check what I did wrong here. Message. Uh, let's see if it comes out. Do 
So it's there. I wrote something out. Snip it. Snip it. Oh. I did not get the cutter on that one. Where is that? Ah. Go away. Snip it. Yeah, this needs to be the cutter of this whole thing. That explains it. And uh, I'll take that part out too. Same thing? Come on now. Published at channel ID. Ah, Minas Mazer says, could you use add file local variable prop line? That's actually a good idea. Um, if not a prop line, then potentially um, a section of variables lower in the file. But I think that do those get evaluated automatically or do you have to accept it? can't remember. Okay, so Snippet is right here. Why is it com complaining? Wrong type argument. Save current buffer. Save current. No, no, no. Oh, did I do something stupid? Yes, I did something stupid. That right there. Okay, so now let's go down and run this thing. <laughs> wrong, wrong type array. All right. Good idea though, Minas. Good idea. Okay, so, um, oh, well that would explain part of this. Up, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not running this function yet, but it's it needs to be updated for sure. Ah, it did something. Let's go look at the file. All right, so ID, title, description. Oh, crap. I don't want to put description in there because the description is the entire file. Um, there is a way to remove a field, right? So there's a sock, but there's also um, remove. All occurrences of element removed um, are a sock. Return non nil if it's equal, no. Emacs, remove item from a list. Map delete, okay. Seek remove. Del Q. Okay, yeah, 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 I see what that's doing. What about uh, what Captain Nobeer said, map delete? Where does that come from? Map.el, okay. Delete key in place from map and return map. Does that work with an A list? Map delete uh, A1 B2. I think that's uh, good, right? And then B. Oh, very nice. Okay, so that's what we want to do here. We want to get rid of map delete. Um, get rid of the description and we don't want to store the description inside that file because that's just like redundant. What the hell? What now? Uh Oh, have I upset the API gods at this point? So cap and no beard, how do I get the error response out of a failed request? Because I'm definitely getting something wrong now. Uh, let's see.
a signal. Uh, else is an optional callback function. Call when request fails within one argument, a please error struct if else is nil. Uh, error is signaled when the request fails. Otherwise, uh, please curl error, HTTP error as appropriate. All right, so let me try the else. So if I go into the get else lambda error, let's try that out and then go back down to the function I'm trying to run here. Something's very strange. Condition case, okay. Ah, here we go. Unauthenticated. So apparently uh, my token expired. That's fun. So we definitely want to see this working before we head out of here. So let me try to authenticate again. Um, I'm going to hide my screen one last time. So you can get to see my lovely face while I do this one more time. Okay, and let me just try it to make sure that okay, I think that might be great, great, great. Okay, we're back. I think my screen's back. Alejandro says, did your token expire for using a not registered application? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so I, now I got a different kind of error. Um, save current buffer, wrong argument type, care, p, string p, nil. Did I write a nil somewhere? Uh, map, delete, video, description. Um, let's see, message, uh, removed. I don't know. Let's try this and see if it actually returns something. And then that. Removed. Okay, well, that looks right. Um... What about this part? Because everything should be good. Oh, does it do a destructive delete? Uh-oh. Probably does a destructive delete. Let's do this. Uh, description, uh, cutter, asoc, description, video. And then uh, this part will just become description. Okay, boom. All right, now let's go look at the file. And then we have the ID and the title. I need to put a new line in there as well. So let's do this, I, if, if that works. Okay, let's go back to the file. E yes, it did work, but I put it in the wrong place. There you go. And run the function, there we are. Back in this file. Okay, so that's what I was looking for. Excellent stash. Well, thank you. So we've gotten to a point now where we have metadata at the top of the file. Uh, the ID and the title of the video, um, and then the entire description as part of the file. That's great. That's a starting point to be able to do the other things we need to do. I'll get rid of this removed uh, message. Map remove. Oh, is that the one? Okay, map delete, map remove. So let's do that one. And then, I mean, we could put this back in. Let's just give it a try. All right, so now I'm just going to run that one more time. Oh, what did I do wrong? Let me make sure I, I did the right uh, uh, as a predicate. Eh, I'm okay with delete. Though, it is a little bit dangerous. Uh, predicate being, um, let's see. 
map removes as predicate and then map. So if I were to have video as the map, predicate comes first, lambda, item, uh, equal, cutter, item, uh, description. That's a bit more verbose, not so crazy about it, but you know, if it does the job, it's fine. Uh, something wasn't happy. Did it actually write it out? I, I don't trust that this got written out. Let me delete that content. Something is not happy. Uh, yeah, didn't write out the file. I mean, EQL. Oh, I'm writing a, a scheme, apparently. That's what's happening here. Still doesn't like it. What is the error? Wrong number of arguments or ah, I think I, oh, which function toggle debug on error. Doesn't even let me EQ should work. Yeah, EQ should work, but something else is wrong. I'm getting an error saying wrong number of arguments. Let's stick with EQL. Yeah, well. That may be slightly more correct. Extract video details. Am I am I in the ending up with the authentication issue again? Oh, all right. Once again, wrong number of arguments. Temp buffer. Temp file. Description. What the hell is this? Okay, all right. Let's let's go back to what worked before. Yeah, let's just stick with that. Because it worked, all right? So now the buffer is back. 7.55 p.m. for me, which means we got five minutes. We didn't get to update anything. Uh, let's try this. Let's just go and... Uh, Let's just be explicit. Let's just try to get an update working and then maybe another stream we can do the rest of, of the work to do the whole thing. So in video meta, I want to pass in the title of the video. I'm just going to do it directly because I know what the title is already. But just watch me destroy a YouTube video right now. That'd be a lot, a lot of fun, I think. Oh, come on. Can I delete the freaking character without it just going away? All right, whatever. Let's do this. All right. So I don't have this function written yet. I still need to, to go and do that. So we have the put uh, part snippet. And it was telling me I need to put stuff in the body. Hey, Annika. So for the body to be correct, it needs to be a JSON body. Ooh, I could really destroy a video like this. That'd be pretty funny. In fact, upload video description, I kind of need Not great. Jason Lib. Yeah, we I mean Jason Lib's fine, but I need to be able to produce a well formed uh request body. Uh populate APIs explorer. Can you show me something? Whatever. I'm not gonna click that anymore. So the body should probably be like the uh the response that I get back. So if I were to just put together, you must specify a value for these properties. So 
H to be put, um, these are gonna be in the body. H to be put needs the ability to accept a body. And then the library we're using, please. Uh, body. No. Body. Uh, put. No. Post. Okay, so body, JSON, and code. Great. That's the example we need right there. Okay. So then I will drop this in right here. Body, JSON, and code. Um, so we have params. We also have uh, body. So let's delete that and just put body in. And I'll evaluate this function. Now in the put section, I can do another A list. This is going to be ID with video ID. It's going to be a snippet with another sub A list, which is going to have title. It's going to need to be video ID, title, and description, which I don't have the full description of the video. Mm. Title. And then we need description. And what else does it tell me that I need to put? There's another required thing. Snippet title, category ID. Only required if the request updates the video resource snippet. That's really stupid. Okay, so I need category ID also apparently. Category ID. And that needs to be something that I include description this can probably go away now uh category cutter asoc uh category id how's that oh it's a capital i okay, let's not do that wrong category id from snippet Maybe I should just store the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Category ID. Now if I go back down, I should probably like get a read on what the actual category ID is. Snippet title, uh, category ID, category ID. Okay. Uh, extract video description that's wrong so yeah i don't know what i should do with a response here and this uh with temp file thing also doesn't belong at all so we're basically just trying to write that back up this could fail horribly what is a category id i don't know but apparently they care about it let's go see Category ID. Video category associated with video. It's probably like uh, for kids or not for kids. Maybe. Categories list. Okay, whatever. 28 is science and technology. Okay, yeah. Probably need to replicate that. So if we were to just, to just uh, uh, load the video description again, let's see if the category ID comes through. Okay, category ID 28, that's right. So we have that now in our little metadata. Is there a pretty print? PP, PP. Object stream. Um, I wanna write that into a buffer though. I'd like this to be pretty printed, the information that goes at the top. Like a PP format, pretty, CL pretty print, JSON pretty print. Yeah. Parental guidance for ELISP news, PP eval last S expression. Well, that's um, with output to string. Yeah, let's see. That's probably the right approach. With output to string and then, phew, there's a bug flying in my face with output to string and then write that into the thing. So uh, with output to string. All right. 
right. Yeah, let's we'll do that another time. Let's see. Try pretty printing with uh, PP and with output to string. <laughs> okay. So what I really need to do, I'm not going to worry about reading the data from the file. Um, upload video description. Wonder. Object print, maybe. <laughs> trying to think, of, trying to think of the right way to do this without uh, doing something really stupid. Get video details. Maybe I can just have a little uh, test function. Define um, video meta test description description upload so let's let's do this video id let video uh where is that get video details so we're basically just gonna do the same thing here this will at least let us tell if something works all right so we got the video details and then uh we're gonna call video meta upload video description and then we're going to pass it the video id we're going to call uh cutter asok uh description uh video we also need uh, the category id and we need the title Probably this is just going to be a uh, busted effort. Eh, let's just take the function off of it. We'll just run it directly. All right. Let's give it a shot. Video ID. Ah. Whatever. Um, we'll take this one. And drop it right there. Lovely code. Okay. Now we'll run this. Video ID. Ah, no. Now this time. Who knows what it's complaining about now? <laughs> Wrong array type argument. Um, who knows where that came from? Uh, extract video description. Who's still calling that? Yeah, that's funny. Somebody's still calling that function. It's unused, it says, but it's being used by someone. Uh, upload video description. Did I reavow that? Probably not. Maybe that's why. Oh, okay. Maybe it did something. Let's go check that video and see if I destroyed it. Well, the description is still there. So then what if what if I I add something to the beginning of the description? Let's just try this. Uh concat, right? No. Append? String append? Nope. Concat. Make the result a string? Okay. 
Um, can cat. Let's do this. This is going to be fun. Redacted? Uh-oh. What did I do? <laughs> All right. Let's see if the video description is updated. Yeah, it's working. See that? Testing description uploading. All right. So it turns out we can actually do this. We can uh, update the description of a video from within Emacs Lisp, mostly thanks to uh, plz.el from Alpha Papa, which is awesome. So let me just go back and oh, actually, I've, I've screwed this now. <laughs> I have to go and edit it myself and take it back out. But I don't know two-hour stream managed to get it working with a lot of uh, wasted time at the beginning because of authentication issues but it did work in the end um maybe we'll continue working on this uh next week because frankly i don't have a whole lot of ideas for streams these days so uh probably next week we'll just continue working on it to get the whole uh flow going but uh we we definitely got something working here so uh kudos to all of you who were uh, helping along the way here i appreciate uh, all the input and uh uh, cheering on for, for victory and whatnot. And um, like I mentioned before, at the beginning of the video, definitely check out uh, Mastering Emacs by um, by Mickey Peterson. And make sure to use the link here that I have in the, uh, the show notes or the description below where it has the System Crafters thing at the end because that's how uh, your purchase of the book will actually help out the channel. And... Um, Let's see. Captain Obeer says, if I may make one final suggestion, use aggressive indent mode for your e-lisping. Yeah, I've been using lispy, and it usually does a pretty good job, but uh, I probably need to use aggressive indent mode. That's, that's for sure. So um, I'm going to include the code that I wrote today into the show notes in case you want to take a look at that. I'll just check that in right here um, as I shut down the stream. And um, yeah, next week, come back to see the uh, startling conclusion of writing a <laughs> an Emacs Lisp script or interface to edit YouTube video description. I think it should be pretty fun. Now that we actually have the uploading working, we can do some automation probably to uh, do you know edits to a vast array of descriptions at the same time, which should be pretty cool. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody, for being here today. I hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, happy hacking. See ya.